Coming up on Fulton Today, the Fulton County Sheriff's Office top command staff members assess its recent mass evacuation drill. We'll tell you what they found. And residents line up hoping to find employment at a county job fair. Fulton Today starts right now. Welcome to Fulton today everyone. What looked like a major emergency at the Fulton County Jail turns out to be just a drill as the entire inmate population was evacuated to an off-site location. So what did the Sheriff's Department figure out thanks to this drill? The Chief Jailer, Colonel Mark Adger is here now with that answer. Sir, welcome back to Fulton today. It's my pleasure to be with you today, Sonia. So first things first, how did the drill go? Well, we think the drill went fairly well. Um, we got to test our plans for evacuating inmates once again. And uh, we got a chance to implement new training and see how that worked out. So we're quite pleased with the way that the training and the uh, COVID mass evacuation drill went. And sir, what was different about this drill from drills that you've done in the past? Well, uh, as you know, we uh, acquired new training equipment to prepare the staff here at the Fulton County Jail to respond to fire emergencies that include uh, smoke and actual flames. Uh, we've been training uh, staff all year with this new equipment, and this was the first chance we had to actually conduct a full-blown co-ed mass evac evacuation drill and test the staff uh, to their responsiveness and uh, whether or not they could deal with an actual smoke and fire situation. So the, the new aspect of the drill was the smoke and actually having to put out a simulated fire and the staff did fairly well in both respects. And how often do you all conduct such drills and are they mandated by law? Well, we do internal drills uh, all year round, uh, several times a month at different locations within the main jail and uh, different locations at the jail annexes. We're always training and preparing for cold red uh, fire smoke emergencies. But uh, we do these big full blown uh, cold red mass evacuation drills with outside entities including MARTA, uh, but, uh, both their, their bus service and police department uh, with the City of Atlanta Police, uh, City of Atlanta Fire, Grady Hospital, City of Atlanta Corrections. All of these uh, external uh, partners in the criminal justice uh, system come together and help us exercise our cold red mass evacuation drill at least once a year and uh, we try to do it maybe even more twice or three times a year. And of course Chief Jailer we always like to get your final thoughts. I would just like to extend uh, express to everyone that we take our duties here at the Fulton County Jail seriously when it comes to the safety and security of the inmates that are incarcerated here. And we also try to protect the county's investment in the county jail system by exercising uh, due care and caution and being able to provide emergency services when needed. Fulton County Chief Jailer Colonel Mark Adger, always great information. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks for having me. And speaking of the Sheriff's Office, for the last six years, they have hosted a youth forum called the Hype Conference to try to help our youngsters make better decisions and become productive citizens. Well, this year was another great turnout. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has our story. Law enforcement, community leaders, and even reform gang members came here to speak at the annual Hype Conference at Atlanta Metropolitan State College. HYPE stands for Helping Our Youth Prosper and Evolve, and the goal was to get the community and law enforcement together to increase public safety both now and for the next generation. About 600 young people heard the message loud and clear. Someone is going to say something to you today that's going to prevent you from being a victim tomorrow. From bullying and gang prevention to social etiquette, youth in 6th to 12th grade gathered at Atlanta Metropolitan State College. They were given guidance on how to avoid going down the wrong path. 
The speakers, they're really nice, and they taught us life lessons and what to do and what not to do, because out there in the real world, you're in danger every second you're out there. So, like, they taught us, like, things like, don't do this, don't do that, and it's just a way of, you know, how to keep yourself out of the system. Some of the speakers were former gang members and served jail time. My message is to be able to sacrifice who you are for what you want to become and to break a cycle, to break the cycle um, that had been passed on from generations. The event wasn't just for kids. Fulton County Sheriff Ted Jackson says the adults were also given advice. And this is to help them make the right decisions, not only the young people, but the parents. Uh, Michael Thurman today talked to parents about communicating with the young people. Stop yelling at them and to listen and communicate. And this is important to be productive in life. The event keeps gaining in popularity year after year. Over the past six years, more than 3,000 young people have heard the messages at the annual Hype Conference. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, more than two dozen employers set up shop at a career expo looking to hire. Fulton's Workforce Development and Housing and Human Services teams, along with the county's chairman, hosted this event. The expo also included workshops on writing resumes, interviewing skills, and dressing for success. If you are a job seeker, the, one of the most important things is come prepared, dress for success, have your resumes, and be able to speak and be assertive in trying to get a job. So those are very critical points because the first uh, impression is a lasting impression. So we encourage our job seekers to please come prepared, dress for success, bring your resumes, and be ready to go. Many of the employers are ready to hire within the next 60 days. Well, the job fair is meeting my needs. I went to various tables, and of course I'm excited about that. I'm going to be following up on the leads that I have, and I believe that I have made some real good connections. Representatives from educational and training groups were also on hand with information to help the applicants increase their potential in getting a job. Workforce Development offers career advisement and job readiness programs and services all throughout the year. You can contact their office to get details. Residents in unincorporated South Fulton speak out about garbage collection and illegal dumping. Public Works and General Service hosted a series of meetings on the county's solid waste plan. An estimated 10,000 households in unincorporated parts of South Fulton do not have garbage collection, a situation that keeps county employees cleaning up illegal dump sites throughout the year. And we're telling them that they can't get rid of the illegal dumping without residents having garbage service. I've lived in the area for 37 years and I see the problem getting worse and worse. Um, I belong to a homeowners association. We clean up uh, twice a month going along the main thoroughfares. Schofield Road is one that I tackle all the time. It's property that the city of Atlanta owns and does not clean up. Uh, lots of trash there and I'm hoping that we can get mandatory garbage collection for everyone. Without question, if we have a, a consolidated waste where everybody is accountable and everyone got to pay, I have no doubt that would cut down on solid waste and hold that resident accountable for their own waste by picking it up. Now, if you'd like to get more information on the county's solid waste plan, call 404-612-7400. An international delegation of engineers, architects, and government leaders visit the Johns Creek Environmental Campus. The group wanted to get a close-up look at the county's award-winning facility. Hong Kong is about to expand its own sewage treatment facility. And the tour is really wonderful here because the plant operators and the engineers explained a lot about the design to the operation of the plant and this really did, gave us a lot of useful information for our upcoming project. The plant uses biotechnology to treat up to 15 million gallons of water a day in a park-like setting surrounded by nature trails and ponds. It also includes an educational facility with a classroom and teaching lab. The delegation was impressed by the county's state-of-the-art facility. And still to come, seniors check out a one-woman show just before it hits the big stage. We'll tell you what they think in our District by District coverage next.
South Fulton residents rid their home of unwanted bulky trash for free and North Fulton's emerging leaders get a lesson in government. Here's this week's district by district coverage. District 1, Commissioner Liz Hausman welcomes a group of North Fulton residents to the headquarters of Fulton County Government. The vice chair hosted this class from Leadership Johns Creek at the Government Center. The organization is designed to develop leadership talent and in individuals representing the Johns Creek community through a series of learning experiences. And hopefully spark some interest um, in some of the students as they figure out what they might want to do with their life. Um, that maybe they want to get in involved with local government. Um, they're leaving here and they're going to go visit our courts um, and then take a tour of the jail. So it's a very informative day that the students had with us here at Fulton County. And today I learned about all the different um, parts of the government, how there's so many different paths and areas where they need, people need to work together cohesively as one group. And that was just really important for everyone to work as a team to get things done. Today I learned that there are definitely a lot more departments and agencies and people working in the government than I thought to help um, the county and the community and all uh, the citizens in it. The commissioner has hosted a number of North Fulton leadership classes at the government center. District 3 seniors learn the skills to become more social. Participants at the Dorothy C. Benson facility take part in the AARP Technology Educational Knowledge Academy. Called Tech for short, the hands-on free workshop teaches seniors some of the very technology basics. Trying to learn the, my phone so that I can compete with my grandkids. It was a great class. I think it was well paced. Um, it didn't go too fast, and at the same time, it covered a lot of things, and it was an enjoyable class. All participants received a free touchscreen stylus pen and take-home guidebook intro to Facebook and other social networks. AARP held a number of the tech workshops for county seniors. And District 4, a one-woman show, okay, makes its know. way to the New Horizons Senior Center. As a part of the Atlanta Black Theater Festival, actor Diane Johnston performed Desperate Church Wives. The story of a Sunday school teacher who gets arrested for being a lady of the night is the modern day version of a biblical story of prophet Hosea and his wife Gomer. The audience stayed glued to the performer who also wrote the production. The audience was great. The seniors loved it. The seniors enjoyed it. They, they clapped along. They gave a little mm-hmm and ah-has and all right nows in the best places. It was uh, exciting. The way that she performed all those characters was just phenomenal. And it was, a, it was good for the seniors because it related to the Bible, which is something that they can relate to. And it was funny. It was very, very funny. In this Canadian Comedy Award nominated show, the actor simultaneously transitions between six memorable characters with no costume changes. I love the play. It's amazing how she can do that. With a one man, with a one person show, it was fantastic. I loved it. This was her first performance ever before a senior center. Following her successful review at the New Horizon Center, she also performed at the Ray Charles Theater at Morehouse College. In District 5, residents take advantage of the opportunity to rid their homes of all of those bulky, unwanted items they've been meaning to throw out. Fulton's Public Works and General Services team helped citizens dump everything from appliances to old furniture on bulky trash amnesty day. At the Merck Road Transfer Station location, residents even got a chance to shred documents. It's a day that many residents look forward to each quarter. It's just wonderful that we can uh, have an opportunity to bring our uh, trash for shredding or important documents I mean for shredding and any large type debris that we have or appliances it's just a wonderful service and I really appreciate uh, Commissioner Arrington and all that were involved in making this possible first of all I don't have to pay anything and it's so easy to clean out when you're cleaning out your garage with all the trash you got somewhere to take it and I just love it bulky trash amnesty day was also held at Creel Park and at the South Fulton Service Center on Stonewall Tell Road. And finally, District 6 Commissioner Emma I. Darnell applauds the works of art by seniors at this year's Artist Walk. County seniors showed off their masterpieces at the Harriet G. Darnell Senior Multipurpose Facility. This year's theme of the event, 
our world, our imagination. The fourth annual exhibit features the works of seniors in the life enrichment classes at the facility. The nice thing about this event is it's the, pretty much our annual event where the artists have the one and only chance to display their works. And uh, every year it's grown. I think we started out the first year with about 50. Now we up to, I think I have 102 artists this year. Seniors created quilts, decorative arts, ceramics, and paintings as a part of this year's event. Some even sold their masterpieces. And still to come, discovering the healing powers of music. Stay with us. During Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Fulton County wants to remind women about the benefits of early detection as breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer among women in the state. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has a story of just what the county is doing to help. There are pink breast cancer reminders everywhere. And you actually check your breast with this handy, okay? And you start under your own pit. Mm -hmm. Using the pads of your fingers, okay? From signs and decorations to outreach events at libraries and senior centers, this month the entire county is putting the spotlight on breast cancer awareness. Seeing that information most definitely plays a big encouragement in um, basically taking care of yourself and reminding yourself to be proactive with breast cancer. Health officials recommend women do a self breast exam every month and those 40 years and older should get a yearly mammogram. It's very important because early detection is the key to uh, surviving breast cancer. I would also like to encourage them to get their uh, physical exams and to just stay healthy. County health offices offer a breast and cervical cancer program for uninsured women who meet certain requirements. There's also a family planning program where women can get a physical examination and pap smear. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. For more information on the county services for women, call the Fulton County Women's Health Program. That number is 404-612-1649. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Fulton joins community partners in tackling the growing health and safety issue of cyberbullying. The Office of Workforce Development and the Chairman's Office teamed up with civic and government organizations to help teens create a public service announcement campaign. The special project called Through My Lens will introduce teens to filmmaking and careers in the industry as well as teach them how to prevent and deal with cyberbullying. Online technology makes it easier for youth to post or text something they would never say face to face. PSAs are just very important because they enlighten our community and they tell people, hey, this is real, and attaching it to real people who are the face of the bullying, the victims, um, you know, it just makes it hit home. According to Cyberbullying Research Center, there is a strong link between bullying and depression. Now that can cause a number of serious health effects, including anxiety, physical illness, and high rates of school absence. Seniors learn the healthy and calming effects of simply listening to music. As the sounds of music fill the air, seniors gathered to try and gain health benefits from the calming melodies. The music therapy class at the Helene Mills Senior Multipurpose Facility explores the positive effects songs can actually have on the body. The class instructor says it can boost one's mood, alleviate pain, and enhance memory. Uh, the reason I like progressive muscle relaxation is because it always is giving you something to do. So if you're like me, I have a hard time focusing for a long time on just emptiness. Uh, this is giving you a task that's actually helping you relax. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it helps all the people reduce their stress. The American Music Therapy Association has researched to support the benefits of the practice on its website. And when we come back, a look at children discovering a whole new art form. Stay with us.
Although children as young as five take the first steps to possibly becoming one of the next Oscar award-winning actors. During a youth acting class, youngsters learn some of the beginning techniques of acting. The students gathered in a circle to tell an impromptu story as a group. Each child stood up and dramatically acted out their part in the tale. The class is for 5 to 12 year olds at the Aviation Community Cultural Center every Saturday. We learn a lot of theater. Uh, theater is meant to be provocative and sophisticated and uh, liberal as in broadening the mind. The students will practice all fall and then have a final performance class where they will do monologues and plays. There are also adult acting classes at county arts facilities for anybody 18 and older. For more information, you can simply go to FultonArts.org. And finally, another group of children learn an ancient Japanese art form. You'll be also helping, I hope. Staff from Fulton's Water Resources Department gave the kids rubber fish to paint at the East Atlanta Branch Library. Now those painted fish were then pressed up against the paper to make a fish printing. It's similar to the Geo Teku fish printing practice, which dates back to the mid-1800s. So the idea is that we teach the children about fish and their habitats and the water, the clean water that they need through art. And by engaging in the art project, it engages their emotions. And then they start to feel connected to their water. The children also got a chance to learn about the gills and fins on the fish. So the project was educational and creative. For more information on other events and programs at the library system, you can go to AFPLS.org. And before we go, we'd like to remind you that we want to connect with you online. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, anytime on our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.